All right. Hey, everyone. This is Kelvin um, talking to the members of Majesties, uh, Tanner, Carl, and uh, Matt. Um, how are you guys doing? Awesome. Great. Doing great. Thanks for having us on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Like I like I was saying, I'm a big fan of the new Majesties album, uh, Vast Reaches Unclaimed, which just came out. It's, so it's out there for people to enjoy. Um, yeah. So how, uh, congrats on that. How does it feel now that, you know, your work is out there for people to check out? I mean, it, it feels pretty good. It, it's, it, it's been a long time coming. I mean, we, you know, we started writing this stuff in, uh, you know, really 2016 and we had this, this burst of, you know, wrote maybe 20 songs in that short time period and then whittled them down to 10. And like in 2017, we already knew what the album was going to contain. We had the 10 songs sequenced out and <laughs> Tanner and I have been listening to this thing for, for that long. And, and we, we brought Matt in and we, we had some other friends kind of come and go based on, you know, their availability. And um, it, it eventually we just decided that's the three of us, let's just do it. And so it's, it's still feels a little unreal that it's finally, out and you know when i always think of whenever a record comes out it's no longer mine belongs to everybody else who hears it so it's been interesting to hear people's interpretations and get their get a feel for what it means to other people if it means anything and that's been fun yeah i'd, I'd say that's the way you phrase that question is important i think like how do you feel now that it's released you know it's like to echo what carl said like is a lot of initial excitement and then when you see people getting really happy you know and like it seems like you're hitting the demographic you really intended it's really exciting but then you see like hype you know that like you're not sure if you're generating it or other people are and you know like get worried uh i don't know is this kind of a part of the culture of the internet that you forget about you know <laughs> unless you're releasing records every year where you know like in a comment section, you just, I just am always like tempted to be like, no, like <laughs> I have to clarify something. I don't, cause you know, like Carl said, once it's out there, it's everyone's, but I don't know, exciting and terrifying. <laughs> okay. Um, how about you, Matt? Um, how does it feel now? Like, you know, the, the music's out and you know, you've probably read some reviews or responses. It's been, been uh shockingly positive i i loved playing on it and, and i love the music and and enjoy the camaraderie with with these guys and we just had a great time putting it together i don't know that we expected anybody to really get it the way they're getting it and so it's it's a genuine uh surprise and uh pleasure to read these reviews and how excited people are for it because it really taps into something that makes us excited and something that um made us it kind of regenerates some of that excitement that we had when we were coming up and and really getting into music as young people and, and the things that inspired us to become musicians for our whole lives and it's exciting to see other people sharing in that excitement with us yeah awesome um uh, i i should mention i usually release this as like the audio portion but um if, uh if you if you guys don't mind just kind of like introducing kind of like your Roll in the band. Uh, we could start with uh, with you, Matt. You just you just came. My name is yeah, yeah. I'm Matt Kirkwald. I'm the bass player in Majesties. Uh, I'm Carl Skildum. I'm uh, a guitar player. Yeah, I am Tanner Anderson. I am a guitar player and uh, vocalist. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I should, I'll probably just keep saying this to everyone. Yeah, definitely check out the the new album. By Majesty's uh, vast uh, reaches unclaimed uh, should be out by now. Um, yeah, I I got um, I mean I'm like a nerd, you know. I follow like record labels, bands on. Well, I mean I do this podcast, so it's kind of like my like pretty much my extension of like listening to music is just you know sharing it and you know telling people about music and. Yeah, I heard the, some of the singles that came out uh, earlier this year. And yeah, I was just like immediately hooked and um, definitely, you know, 
<laughs> reminded me of those early like melodic death metal uh gothenburg uh swedish bands like in flames dark tranquility um and so yeah i was hooked on it and i'm um, just um glad that you guys are you know getting some recognition for that and i know you guys are part of some other projects um do you mind just kind of, uh, I guess, you know, I think a lot of people here probably that listen are familiar, but if for those not familiar, um, we, I believe it's Carl and Matt, you guys are part of Inixorum, I believe. Correct. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, Tanner is part of, um, uh, Upsequai. Correct. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a fan of that, of those projects as well. Um, I like pulled out some stuff here. So, oh, awesome. um, yeah, I got the. I don't have the new Anxorum that came out last year. Um, I slipped my. Honestly, I, I kind of flew under the radar for me, but I do have the, the um, nice. Moonlight Navigation, nice. which was was sick. And then um, got the Opposite Kauai, um record. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Drop the record. No, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so those are some of the other projects you guys are involved in. Um, uh, how did the Majesties like? What like what was like the idea um, for starting Majesties? Or you know, or can any of you kind of like say like you know, oh, this is kind of when and where the idea for Majesties started? Well, yeah, th- uh, this is Carl here. At, um, so. I guess it was about 2015 Tanner Tanner and I were became friends and you know he had the idea that to bring Obsequii from uh really a, a recording project to a, a live project again and it was basically building up a whole new band from scratch and so I, I was part of part of that process and was was a lot of fun um but it was really you know focusing on on uh, getting existing songs from Obsequiae's two albums at that time ready to play out. And uh, so it wasn't, a, we, we weren't a band that was going to get together and jam out new songs. So it was that, that, that was definitely understood at that point. And, and I, it was just a one rehearsal. I was just playing, just warming up with a couple riffs that um, I had been doing for my own amusement. And Tanner said, what, what, what is that? <laughs> and um I said, oh, I don't, I don't really know. It's not anything. And, and uh, we, we kind of started talking after that, uh, that session just said, we should, uh, let's uh, write a melodic death metal record together. And, and um, it just kind of took off from there. We'd get together uh, in the weeks, the weeks that we didn't have obsequi high practice, he and I would just get together at his place in front of the computer and just write stuff. And it, uh, it came out really um, quickly. We we had a lot of a lot of ideas. Some of them were ideas that we had been sitting on for years. From you know, both of us had riff tapes from you know going back to you know when we were really um, young and impressionable <laughs> guitar players, and um, and some of those riffs stuck with us and made it into this album, which was really fun because these were things that had been living in our heads for all these years, and and now they've been set free. So I, I don't know, that's really kind of how the origin of the project started. I, you know, um, Tanner, if you have anything else to add about. Sure. I mean, um, yeah, you don't always have to wait for like more specifics and a question to, to talk about if that's okay with you, Calvin, but I, I don't know. I, I would add just that. I think one of the fun things about uh, even getting together in the first place to do the live lineup was connecting over a lot of these bands and really specific albums and just kind of like feeling like you're not alone in the universe, you know, mm-hmm. like with your yeah. appreciation with this stuff. And sometimes uh, it can feel like that with genres like melodic death metal, where it means like 12 different things, to 12 different people, you know, uh, like at the, you know, at a show or something like that. So I, it meant a lot of the same things to us. And a lot of the things that excited us about it were sort of the wildness of early melodic death metal when the genres were more blurred um you know just between like aggression and melody and you know metal vocals and death metal vocals whatever that stuff really means it was just kind of like 
the wildness of it. And uh, I think we had a real desire to share that with one another. And then of course, playing it together was awesome. It's like setting two raccoons out in an alley at midnight, you know, right after the restaurant tossed out all the, uh, all the fish, you know, we were just going <laughs> down. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, how did you get involved, Matt? Or like, uh, when when did you get approached to to be a part they of came, uh, Majesty's? They came came to me a few years ago. Um, I was playing with Carl in Antiverse, and then Carl started in Nextrum, and so I worked on that with him too. And uh, so I met Tanner through Carl years ago. And one day we were just sitting around at a, a pizza joint in Minneapolis and I was with those two and I said, Hey, you ever need a, another guitar player or a bass player? I'd love to, you know, do something with you um, outside of what we're doing. And uh, Tanner and Carl started throwing me these tracks and saying, we'd like you to play bass on this. And I'm like, what is this? And they're like, we don't even know yet. We're just, uh, we're just having some fun. And so <clears throat> I laid down tracks in the 10 tunes and sometime in between there, I started playing live with Obsequii as well. And, and honestly, we, we finished up tracks quite a while ago and just kind of sat on it for a little bit until everything settled down in the world. And, and I, and I think the timing couldn't have been better. So these two are the masterminds of all this stuff. And I'm kind of lucky to just hang out with them sometimes and, Make some make some uh, guitar noise or bass noise and have a have a blast doing it. So that's my story. Yeah, being very generous. I think we both uh, aspire to the level of musicianship and just let's be honest, man as Matt. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You guys, you know, mentioned it, and um, you know, the band is kind of like Our uh, Majesties is like going back and kind of, I guess you could say celebrating that like mid nineties, like Gothenburg, Sweden, Swedish sound. Um, what, how did you guys like, you know, first like hear about like bands, like, you know, I guess the big ones would be like in flames at the gates, like, or were those like the bands that, um, first caught your ear like um back then or how, how did you get in first listen of those bands or that sound yeah i, I this, this is carl again i yeah for me i think that's those those were probably the, the the first few that i heard i mean um i had a i had several uh friends that i in in like in the 90s we would just all sort of you know, go to record stores and look for every everything that was death metal no matter where it came from or what it was and and one of us would get it and you know we'd review it for our buddies and you know someone would call each other we had like a phone this this is the 90s so we weren't like texting each other and, and someone would actually have to pick up the phone and say hey i just got the new uh blah 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 or the new you know whatever it was and and we would basically say yeah you need it or nah it's not that great and one of my friends called me up uh and said uh, they just got the wrong again records compilation and it was great and I needed to hear it. And, and, and he said to me, I've got two words for you in flames. And he, he played this, their song that was on that compilation, which is um, a song ever dying, which is also on the subterranean EP. And he played, played it to me literally over the phone. And I'm listening to this. I'm going, yep, this is, this is what I've been wanting to hear forever. And uh, it just kind of snowballed from there. I, you know, I couldn't, you couldn't find this stuff in most stores. There was, there were a couple of places in, in Minneapolis that, that sold imported CDs. So I, I think I found some of their later stuff there, but most of it I had to order just by just dis like descriptions from uh, mail order catalogs, like relapse or, or dark symphonies. Um, so I was lucky. I got a lot of stuff that way, just without hearing it. I never heard dark tranquility before. I just ordered it from, <laughs> from those catalogs. And I, you know, I, I, I'm like, I hope this is good. And it was great, but <laughs> that's kind of how it was. You just had to take things by description and, and by, uh, you know, crossing your fingers, but it, it worked out. It was really, really kind of a fun way of discovering things. Um, primitive, but, but rewarding when you found the stuff that was really magical. Yeah. Similar for me, um, as well, uh, except, um, I guess I definitely am a little younger, but I, um, uh, not, by, not by much. I mean, still 
a lot of um, definitely playing stuff over the phone. I think really uh, in the time of Metal Maniacs, that was a big deal because yeah. you could find that. Oh, yeah. And there was a store, you know, it's the same <laughs> store when I was a little boy. I, you know, got uh, turtle food, <laughs> you know, for my pet turtle or whatever I was doing, you know, Ben Franklin, I got Metal Maniacs there. So I would read Jeff Wagner, especially when he came on, um, wrote a brilliant piece about sort of the Gothenburg scene and just kind of like how it had correlations to counterpoint theory within, you know, m melody and harmonic structure. And still, I couldn't tell you the first thing about like academia and counterpoint. Um, but there was definitely enough translation to uh, laymen like me that I got really fascinated with layering um, harmonies. And so it was a really fun way to like get to uh, play guitar, um, like listening to a lot of those Swedish bands because I, I had a four track player. So I was able to like try out stuff I was hearing and then hear a harmony on top of it. I know that doesn't really answer how did you find Swedish bands, but that's definitely what like got my interest, you know, was like access to Metal Maniacs and fortunately some great record stores. Yeah, awesome. Uh, how about you, Matt? How did you kind of first start, started hearing the uh, like, I guess, Gothenburg, Sweden bands? I was pretty late to it. I was, um, I grew up in, I, so I graduated high school in 92, so I'm 48. So it was like right in that era for me where I was coming out of high school and going to, I was going to music college and I worked really hard my first year here to find like metals, the metal scene and stuff like that. And so I grew up in pretty traditional heavy metal, like Iron Maiden, Sabbath, and then into thrash music and stuff like that. And, and some death metal, like the early death metal for me when I was in high school was the, the Florida stuff more, more than anything. And then when I got to music school, uh, I couldn't find anybody who was like minded in metal and stuff like that. And so I kind of put it all away for a little while and I missed out on the beginning of the Gothenburg scene. I uh, missed out on Swedish death metal altogether, to be honest with you. The only bands I listened to back then, so I listened to Carcass quite a bit. Um, I was really into the Heartwork album. Uh, I, I loved Entombed and that was about as deep as it got for Sweden for me. And so these guys, introduced like i was familiar with in flames and i was familiar with slaughter uh, of the slaughter of the soul record by at the gates that was about the closest that i got to it until i met these guys and they said look backwards because i kept listening to in flames records and and kind of trying to not to it's the same thing a lot of people say i guess but i wasn't into it it didn't appeal to me at all um it, it was like kind of metal core for me and i've never really been into that all that much uh and so they carl in particular pointed me backwards into the beginning of that stuff especially and it kind of started with dissection i guess which you know i don't think they're classified as Gothenburg per se but he's the one that hit me to early early in flames dark tranquility in the at the gates uh gates of ishtar um sacramentum things like that and that really got me into the melodic side of things and so i've been getting an education from these guys now for years on this stuff and it's I think it's finally starting to really take hold. Um, it's it's beautiful stuff, and as a uh, a music college nerd, uh, it's it's kind of crazy how they landed on some of this stuff because they they knew just enough of the rules to mess around, and then they just kind of abandoned them, and it works beautifully. And uh, so I I would say just the last ten years at most, I've been really getting into it. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you on that, Matt. Like. Um... I, well, I, I graduated in high school 2004. So it was like right when the internet was kind of stick, like, you know, taken over. And yeah, it was for me like at the gates and in flames, but um, I didn't go back. Um, I know I definitely got uh, the, the gesture race uh, for in flames. And then I think I got like terminal spirit disease for at the gates but then the one that, the releases before that yeah it was like they were hard to find and so i kind of that's kind of where i um got introduced to them and 
Uh, it was like, yeah, just through reading, like, like what you said, Tanner, um, metal maniacs. Um, for me, it was, uh, do you guys remember BWBK or yeah. brave words, bloody knuckles? Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they it used to come with the monthly, like a CD, like a, a, a sampler. Yeah. Those um, are great. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of where I kind of started finding out about bands and, um, you know, reading, you know, things like metal maniacs and, um, I know Revolver back then, I, I think Revolver right now is kind of like more like mainstream, but Revolver like in the early 2000s, they they had some like, they covered a lot of more like heavier bands and I would always like see like In Flames and At The Gates like referenced. So then I would check them out and that's kind of like where I picked up on them. And then um, there was like, I, I didn't do mail order. There was a record store in, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Arizona, but Flagstaff, Arizona. Um, they had a like a cd um place and you could put in like special orders which was cool like so i would just go in and ask them to order like you know the crown or like in flames gesture race and then it would come in like a week later so that, that's kind of how, how i would do my mail order but uh that's kind of where it started and then um i did get into like the metalcore stuff you know bands like um like like darkest hour and like kill switch engage they they like are influenced by you know in flames so I, I did get into that uh which was starting to like you know blow up when i graduated high school um but yeah i've you know been a fan ever since you know i'm not a musician i i i, I tried i took some guitar classes but i just it wasn't sticking with me and i <laughs> i kind of just like you know i was like more into like like skateboarding and stuff so i just kind of like nice. messed around with that <laughs> but uh but yeah, I, I definitely can say like, you know, in flames at the gates, um, like dark tranquility, those bands really, uh, kind of kickstarted like, or I guess was like the, my, my starting point or entry point into like heavy and extreme music. Um, I'm, I'm just now starting to get into the lesser known bands. Like you mentioned gates of Ishtar and, um, um, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that's the main one. Um, and I'm I'm finally checking out like those like early in flames like uh pre uh gesture race um yeah. um albums or in or EPs. You're in for a treat. Oh yeah. No, I mean I'm just like just listening to some of those today and like listening to the Majesty's album. I'm just like yeah, I'm just like it's like um yeah, it, it, you guys really hit the hit the nail on the head with that, uh, with the new album for majesties. Um, and I'm blown away by the melodies. Like, how do you guys like create those like melodies and those like, like guitar leads? Like, I don't know that just like, it's mind boggling how like that, those melodies you guys created is like, you know, so similar or, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, not, not that you guys are copying them or anything. It's, but how did you guys like create those like melodies and structures? Do you mind if I, Jump in before you do, Carl. <laughs> Please, it's... yeah, I don't, I don't, because I don't know how to answer that really. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, because it's sort of like, how do you, how does one write melodies? But like for me, the simplest thing is like the folky kinds of elements of In Flames, for example, just because I think like they're much more overtly folky than a band like Dark Tranquility or certainly At the Gates. You know, um, even when At the Gates had a fiddle, they were more death metal. <laughs> so go figure, but like my mom is a harp player, you know, so I grew up with a lot of uh, Celtic music and other music, but let's just say Celtic for now, because that's what's important. And like hearing a lot of that, playing a lot of that growing up um, and um, finding uh, metal, you know, it's like, it's really intimidating to learn to play guitar while listening to really technical music. Like, um, I mean, maybe, because so much death metal was so over the top, especially like death grind kind of stuff that was getting very popular um, toward the end of the 90s, um, where, where I worked in Minneapolis, uh, there's a lot of kind of grind bands that were just like very intimidating. And I feel like um, I didn't really even know where to start when I just like would watch these guys play and their fingers were like all over the fretboard. I'm a very modal person, you know? So like I hear, melodies in their kind of in the in the intervals I my head is sort of like fixed on so if anything it's been a fight to like move out of modality and I feel like bands like In Flames, Dark Tranquility, um, even At The Gates is a little more chromatic but like they're all pretty modal 
Um, and it's just sort of clever skips between those intervals or maybe with the harmonies, especially because like the melodies by themselves could just be folky. They could be whatever. But like, I think what makes Gothenburg school really interesting is the way they don't use like parallel harmonies, like just like an old 90s death metal, you'd have a lot of fourths or fifths, like guitars basically mirroring each other, um, you know, a fourth or a fifth up. Um, and then with something like Iron Maiden, you'd have parallel thirds. With Gothenburg School, you'd have way more um, switches, you know, uh, like between those intervals and those harmonies. And again, that wildness is like very fun. So there's a part that's sort of like innate to your sort of listening sensibilities that comes out in your playing. But there's also like a part that's learned maybe and informed from that music that's like, maybe if this is a dominant melody I'm writing, I should try and avoid going to the obvious place and go to the place that I think is a little more dissonant, like a sixth or something. And then on the other guitar, kind of remember where that, you know, principal melody was going. I just think that's a really fun thing to figure out for people, at least it was. I mean, if this stuff is really like, we're not reinventing the wheel, but like, if this were easy to do, it's if it was as easy as everyone <laughs> apparently thinks it is to do, you know, why did it not like we're the only ones gatekeeping the style or something, but like, why has no one done it? You know, mm -hmm. anyone can kind of do this post 2000s kind of melodic death metal thing. And a lot of it's really cool, but like the specific thing, I think you're talking about that we're really influenced by, I think is sort of, a, I don't know, it's a learned thing from really listening to those things. Yeah. No, that's, that's cool. Thanks for like sharing that. I'm just, I'm, I'm just like, like I said, just blown away by how you guys like created these songs. Um, uh, yeah, I know like, uh, like, you know, the main like kind of like source that sounds like it's from kind of like the mid nineties, but were you guys like influenced from any like like late nineties or two thousands like melodic death metal or or were there any other bands that from outside that time period that um you know you um kind of were influenced by? I think we we pretty much early on decided we wanted to kind of keep it in the earliest modes of of that. I you know I um I had, you know, I, I kept up with what was happening with a lot of those bands as they, they sort of shifted styles. And, um, you know, I followed along for a while and until I realized I wasn't quite getting what I wanted out of that. And, um, it, you know, and, and some of those changes in directions were that it got more towards like alternative metal and, uh, you know, metalcore and those other things that started to come in, which um, helped to kind of broaden audiences, but it wasn't directly to, to my preference I always felt like ah, I think I'd rather go back and listen to those first couple records of theirs <laughs> just because they 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 spoke to me in a way that was just more to my more to my preference uh, and I think Tanner felt the same way and when we met you know we like the first thing we, we started oh you you know this obscure record from 1995 and, and it was like all this stuff that we were just like oh yeah that was great that was great and we, we bonded over that um sort of extreme nerdiness of liking that specific early days of the the genre again when it wasn't it wasn't melodic death metal it was just it was just death metal with with melody almost that it, it didn't have a genre tag to it and the I think the one thing we carried out of that and I think if you divide like 90s and beyond like late 90s and early 2000s what people call melodic death metal uh, and that early stuff is that the writing style was a lot more linear they packed a lot more riffs into the song and it wasn't about you know more the traditional rock structure of verse chorus verse um and it was a, it may be a little bit more of a, a journey from beginning to end and so we i i think we kind of consciously tried to keep a lot of that um and and tanner is an an expert at writing in that that style and i i had to kind of force myself a little bit more because i i like to you know i like to write verses and choruses but we when we put our heads together on it i think was it came up came out the way that 
you know, it, it did for Majesty is that it worked that, that we had in just enough places where where there were hooks that would come back, but but also a lot of development from the beginning of, and to the end of the song, and that's really fun for me because it just means you're you're constantly being surprised. There's uh, you don't necessarily know what's going to come around the corner, and I I like that feeling, and and so uh, we we tried to write that way really specifically. This was a very selfish project. We wrote what we wanted to hear because nobody else <laughs> had been doing it. We just wrote the lost record from 1995. <laughs> I think that answer kind of is the like the reason there aren't many bands after 2000 that we could cite. It's not like we weren't looking or like really excited about the music still. But I think you hear a lot of those things in the initial excitement in of early melodic death metal in maybe other styles of extreme metal because it's not like the styles didn't evolve and become great you know and kelvin you probably know as well as anyone with brave words and bloody knuckles like the coverage of opeth you know um alongside bands like kill switch engage at least like in magazines like you really knew what was melodic death metal if you were young you know um what what 2004 was telling you you know and you knew like Opeth was a progressive death metal band. They were very insistent on being a death metal, you know, it was a Mike Ackerfeldt's thing um, for one reason or another. I still think they're kind of like progressive doom death in some ways, you know, um, and like Edge of Sanity is just like the King Crimson of death metal. Yeah. King Crimson, <laughs> they're, they're Edge of Sanity rules, but like, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah, it was, weird. yeah, I think, yeah, definitely, like, like, th when I was in high school, like, yeah, definitely, like, I think Opeth, um, yeah, and, like, Kill Switch Engage, Darkest Hour, I think Unearth, all these bands are just getting really, like, pushed to the forefront, and mm -hmm. there was, I, I found out later, like, a couple of years later, there were some other bands, uh, here, let me see if I can pull this out, uh, I, I pulled out my collection just, just for this, let's see, where is it at? Awesome um let's see so there was a band from arizona from phoenix arizona i think they were like on like metal blade records um vehemence do you guys are familiar with them oh yeah um yeah god was created yeah rules. yeah yeah i have that around here i don't know where i put it um yeah i have that album um the follow-up uh god was created and then they they came they reunited for like a year or something like that, like in, oh, here it is, right here. Yep. What's the name of the band again? Uh, Vehemence. Vehemence. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Not they reunited. The French band, but they're, they're um, yeah, that that record rules. Yeah, like this is like awesome stuff. And then like really creepy like song titles, like, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I don't want to repeat it. People, everyone check it out and you guys should like look at and listen to this album. Um, yeah, this was pretty freaking awesome. I saw that they're going to re-release it on a vinyl, but I've, I have the CD and I'm, I'm happy with the CD. And um, But yeah, this band definitely, I was, uh, I think I saw them like on Headbangers Ball, like when I like started college, like for uh, one of the songs on their um, um uh the the album after this um god was created so yeah this one um sick album yeah and then there there was another band here um i think they only put out like two albums like it and forsaken oh from chicago yeah yeah this album rules too um i think um they put out this one and then another one then they broke up but yeah this was some really cool like us like melodic death metal yeah I remember the remember that being awesome there's a Colorado band called Cerberus too. They played Milwaukee Metal Fest, uh, like maybe in 2000. They were one, two, a sort of like a. You remember that band, Carl Cerberus? I I remember the name and seeing them around, but I don't I I don't have any of their music, so I I couldn't uh, say anything intelligent about it. But I I remember it, all of those bands that were kind of smaller and under the radar. Um, were, I think there were a lot of people doing cool stuff that just didn't quite get the exposure that they probably deserved. Yeah, that talk about an era of like self-publishing that 
uh, didn't really make its way out. You know, like if you had to wait 10 years, you'd find a home for a lot of that stuff, but there was just so much CDR stuff that like wound up stuck in local places just because distros weren't <laughs> stocking that stuff very well. Yeah. Yeah. No, oh no, I'm I'm a huge on like looking for this stuff like like at used like places. I mean, um, I found this one too. Um, Absence. I, don't know if you, oh, I think yeah. they're still around. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. This one's cool. Yeah. This for one's some really reason, cool. my like my my phone always plays a song from that record whenever I I um I don't have any any other audio audio app turned on. I'll it'll play something from that record and i don't know why but it's just that that rec that album has possessed my phone for some reason That's yeah <laughs> yeah I, I like this album because my name is in the thank you list um <laughs> during oh, the okay. the myspace days um i was following them on myspace and then they put out this like um announcement like if you want to be included in our like album like thank you booklet like just send us a message and then and then i did and then like when it came out, I bought that record. Then I, it's like really tiny print, but my name is in the thank you list. It's pretty funny. That rules. Yeah, the thank you list is huge. Like, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's buried it's buried in there somewhere. That's the most underground thing of all time. <laughs> I don't care if it's MySpace. Just like, hey, hit us up if you yeah. want to get thanked. Yeah. So uh, this is like this is like a, a gem for me. Hell yeah. That rules. Um, but yeah, those, those are some of the stuff I found. And then, um, uh, I, I guess there's been a couple of bands here and there, um, that kind of picked up on that. I think this band actually fairly new. Uh, this band came out like, I think two years ago or three years ago, uh, Ashtelborn. Yep. Yep. That's a cool one. Yeah. Yeah. This is a really good one. I think I forget where they're from. Uh, uh man, where are they from? Like Ohio or something like that? Or um anyway, yeah, this is a cool one. I think this is fair. Everyone should check this one out. I think um, before I say it, I'm I'm using my uh Google skills, but I think that's uh same that's the same cover artist um that we worked with one oh yeah Castellano. Yeah. yeah, I I man, I I swear I, I got the Majesty's album like on the way shipping, but yeah, let's talk about that. Like, how did that cover art come about for you guys, or did you guys have a specific image in mind, or or a specific um, artist in mind? You know, that that we we had really, yeah. It, so confirmed. Uh, that's that Astroborn is is uh, Juan. Um, when we got connected with Twenty Buck Spin, we had uh, we didn't have a specific cover artist in mind. We more. We just knew that it, we wanted it to be some something kind of surreal and um beyond that we, we didn't really know where to start and uh, that was just a connection that dave made for us he worked with with uh, juan on some other uh bands on on the label and just made the connection and it it was great from the beginning he he took i basically described the the story of one of the songs sidereal spire and he yeah. Uh, we took it and ran with it, and it was really beyond our wildest expectations. What he came back with, it was just perfect. Yeah, no, I dig it. Like, uh, I can't wait for like just the like the physical copy to come in. Um, like, yeah, just I've been like I've been streaming it now that the album came out, like on like Spotify and like uh, the Bandcamp uh, app. Um, and then um. Uh, another thing I wanted to kind of touch on with you guys, um, like I said, I'm a big fan of like the bands from that area, the Wisconsin, Minnesota, like North Dakota. Uh, I was hoping to just kind of talk about like some like bands in your area, like the Minnesota, uh, Minneapolis. Um, yeah. Well, um, you guys mentioned the bands you guys are, are, are a part of, um, I um oh, I'm I'm glad you guys mentioned uh, antiverse. I, I I dig antiverse. I remember um I was in school in North Dakota and I remember I think it was like no uh no clean singing did a little write up on antiverse and then I saw the album cover. I was like, oh that's cool. It looks like a like a like a technical death metal band. But then I checked it out. It was like some kick ass like thrash metal. Um, but um, what are um, what are some bands that you think like yeah definitely people should check out from your area? 
So, I mean, oh, yeah, go Tanner. <laughs> yeah, Sunless is the, the first one. Just want to get that in. Yes, exactly. Sunless is amazing. Um, nothingness. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. the, they're, they're also killer. I mentioned. Yeah, I got the uh, Sunless CD right here. Yes. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, Phobophilic and uh, Maul for just yeah. like brutal death metal. Yeah. Nothingness. Yeah. It, it, in, insanely good. Um, I mean, it's, it's tough because I don't want to, I, I don't want to leave anybody out, but there's so many good bands around here. That's where it's been really fun, especially like in the last 10 years, it's been just kind of an explosion, you know, Panopticon is, is a Minnesota band now and has been for about a decade. Um, so that's very important to all of us we're you know we're good friends with with austin but also the music is amazing um there's some other cool stuff that that's coming out um from minneapolis area uh uh caldicat which is um some some friends of ours uh former members of, of false um they have uh, been really bl blowing my mind with really amazing um super hard to describe black metal but it's it's so good and they're going to have a, an album coming out uh pretty soon so i'm excited about that um and i i feel like we've got just a stack of amazing bands around here um i don't know <laughs> i can yeah. go on, and on. <laughs> yeah no honestly if i like Bandcamp is cool because you can follow like certain like um I don't know, I guess like hashtags or something. So one of the hashtag I follow on Bandcamp is uh, Minnesota, Minneapolis bands. And like, yeah, whatever comes up, I'm like, I'm definitely like checking it out. Um, what about you, Tanner? Is there any like bands you should make from your area people should check out? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of the case, like as soon as like we're off, I'm going to think of all of them. Like when Carl said Caldicat, I was like, holy shit. I can't believe <laughs> that wasn't one of the first ones I said, but um yeah, I don't know. Uh, there are a lot, I think a lot of the ones Carl mentioned and I don't know, uh, to be honest, like I, I haven't followed a lot of like metal, um, like regrettably, I feel actually bad about that. Like I want to be more engaged with like metal, um, in general, besides just like listening to like the same records that I really like, you know, um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a little tricky too. I'm, I live in Boston now, so I haven't lived here long enough to really say that. You know what I mean? So I couldn't tell you all okay. the bands that I think are still here and probably live elsewhere now. Um, but yeah, I know there's just a whole lot of great, aggressive, and cool, challenging music coming out of a Minneapolis. Like Damien Records is a great is a band camp for that label, and it's a, just a ton of stuff. Um, I'd recommend yeah. that label. Yeah, I'll tell you my one of my fa recent favorites right here. Um, uh, Suffering Hour. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. This is this is <laughs> yeah. freaking amazing. This is an amazing album, the Cyclic Reckoning. Um, I I did check out the the album before this one, but this one for this one is like, uh, yeah, it's I still like listen to this like on a constant basis. Um. Do you guys like? Are you guys familiar, or do you guys like come oh, yeah. cross paths with Suffering Hour? Yeah, we, I feel like we've met all of them. Um, I mean, I I know I have at least at the yeah. I, have you did we we? I know I've seen them play in Minnesota. I don't know if Tanner or you and I went to that or if that, but they're they're uh, as as cool as they are on record in in a live setting. It's even it's even more uh, creepy and. Um, harrowing in the best way like not in a bad way but it's just like that the atmosphere is overwhelming they they do a, a really amazing job of translating the sound to a live setting so if you ever get a chance to see them definitely you should do it because they're they're awesome oh heck yeah i mean yeah i live in like northern arizona so yeah if there's any like suffering hour shows like you know, in the Phoenix area or Albuquerque area, I'm definitely gonna um, definitely gonna make my way there. Um, we lost uh, Matt, but uh, Antiverse is really cool. I I, I dig them. Uh, is Antiverse still active? We we are. We've uh, 
we've got a, a third album written and we're just kind of trying to coordinate schedules to, to record it uh, hopefully this year so it can come out um, sometime in 2024. But we had a we had a, a, a rough couple of years, and um, our our bass player Jason um, passed away uh, now four years ago from from cancer, and so that that put a you know a little little bit of a a, a pause on things as we kind of tried to regroup after that. But um, we we want to want to do an, another record, you know, both to because we're excited about it, and also just as a way to kind of honor him. And uh, he would, he wanted us to keep going. So we're, we're finding our way to doing that, but it, you know, it's challenging. I mean, the, you know, there's the distance thing, you know, like with, with Tanner and Boston, we're, we're still working pretty closely together on new majesty stuff. And uh, Mike, our drummer from, from Antiverse is, uh, lives on the West coast now. So um, it's, it, it takes a little bit more work to get around the logistics, but we're, we're still making progress on a, on a third record. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, everyone should check them out. I I I, I dig Antiverse. It's cool, um, killer like thrash band. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we. Oh, uh, I wanted to just. This is kind of like since we're talking about like you know the the at the gates. Um, I met. Um, I don't know if you could see the Thomas Lindbergh of. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It was at it was at the Minneapolis um, at the gate show, the Decibel tour. I think 2015. Yeah. Well, I was yeah. at. The show. Oh, oh, hell yeah. Yeah. I was living in Grand Forks. I, I drove, uh, I don't know, like five, six out, five, six hours just to see, cause this was like when at the gates returned, um, like to the U S on that decibel tour. So like, yeah, yeah, I was like big fan. I like made that like six hour drive from like Grand Forks to Minneapolis just to see at the gates, which was sadly the only time I got to see a show at uh, Minneapolis, downtown Minneapolis. But, um, yeah, I just want to share that with you guys. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it was a good show. Um, oh yeah, I think that's probably the, the last time I ever moshed. Like uh, just hearing like, <laughs> yeah, all the classic like, well, mainly like Slaughter of the Soul songs, since that's kind of what they're most well known for. But yeah, it was an amazing show. Yep. Um, it's hard. But, uh, it's hard to like mosh to like a song like Windows. <laughs> right. <laughs> it have to be Slaughter or you know Terminal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, it was freaking awesome. Yeah, I'm glad I got to like share that with you guys. I'm I'm glad you guys got a kick out of that. I mean, it was yeah, really yeah one of the best shows I've like been to just to see them. And I think I saw them like one more time, like on an. Uh, you know, I thought that was going to be their only tour ever. I was like, oh, I got to go to this. But now they've been on countless like tours. Now they're still active at the gates. Yeah, I was. I'm always really happy when that happens. But there's always a part of me that's like, damn it. You know, like you make the trip and you, you know, you think you're getting something special and it turns out you did, you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, thanks. Thanks again, guys. Um, Those are kind of like, those were the main like stuff I wanted to cover with you guys. And I, yeah, everyone should check out the New Majesty's uh, album, Vast Reaches Unclaimed. It's streaming now. I would recommend purchasing it, the physical copy though, but um. But yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you so much. And and Matt had to had to drop, but he said said to thank you as well. So we really appreciate it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah no it's problem. really cool. Kind of talking, uh, you know, clearly with some someone who loves melodic death. So yeah, thanks awesome. for hanging out with us. Yeah, yeah, thank you.